Welcome to The Circuit. Engineers are celebrated for their roles as innovators, creators, problem solvers, and pioneers of cutting edge technologies. But what about their ability to be great communicators? This week, we're exploring the art of communication in the world of engineering, highlighting those who seamlessly blend engineering with charisma, just like Tony Stark. Initialize sequence. Jarvis, drop my needle. This year, the University of Maine received the Cates Communication Prize for sharing their breakthroughs in bacteria-resistant materials to a general audience. The Cates Communication Prize is an annual competition designed to encourage scientists and engineers to effectively communicate their research in a simple and engaging way. For me, I have been told that I am really, really enthusiastic, almost to the point of distraction sometimes. And so I've, tried, I've taken that and I'm turning that into a benefit, right? Three out of four urinary tract infections in the hospital are associated with urinary catheters. It's a problem Howell and her team of researchers are working to solve. Their solution, a liquid coating on human catheters that could help reduce urinary tract and bloodstream infections. Nature has evolved over millions of years to achieve balance with these organisms. And now we are working to engineer a part of that balance into human materials and processes. Meanwhile, Villanova University in Philadelphia has made communication a part of its engineering curriculum. The ability to think through a technical problem or to try to solve a technical problem is one thing. The ability to communicate that to someone else is what we're trying to focus on here. Frank Falcone, the director of the Career Compass program at Villanova University, has visited many universities to talk about their strategy to train students on communications, ethics, and other important professional skills that are needed in the engineering field today. From their freshman year, engineering students have to take classes that cover these main practices, including how to write an email and working with a mentor. The technical mind of the engineer has a tendency to not do those things. And in fact, we're saying, no, no, we have to do, we have to do that and we have to do more of it. Earlier this year, we talked to engineers at Transcend Air who are cutting commuters travel time with their single engine vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that can go up to 400 miles per hour. But according to their COO, without strong communication abilities, we wouldn't be able to pursue this business at all. It's uh, easily just as important as the technical abilities. Now let's bridge the gap between science and everyday understanding by taking an entry from PNAS Nexus, the official scientific journal of the National Academy of Sciences, and getting an engineer to break down their research in 30 seconds in a way that anyone can understand. We tried to um, calculate the various biophysical uh, sponge-like properties of the different layers of human skin, the dermis, the epidermis, and the outermost stratum corneum. Um, and um, so this hydraulic permeability, which is really what we were after, it describes the ability of water uh, in tissues like the skin to move away from a touch. What if engineering was used to make art? It's essentially my dream job, right? To be an engineer for the arts. Carnegie Mellon University offers an engineering and arts major where students like Jude Bissonette can combine their artistic skills with their engineering training. Or whether that's another artist that I'm working with to um, kind of collaborate on some ideas and figure out like the logistics. Of Jude is living the best of both worlds, getting to build a clock out of cardboard for an art class and launching a rocket in NASA's student launch competition during her internship last year. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you right here again next time at Circuit News TV.